Hello everyone and welcome back to Jumpoochi Jams, the only series that talks about Jumpoochi heroes. Same, spelled the same, said differently. I'm Wookie and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. And we're back after finally being able to record on a Wednesday after fate literally stopped us for an entire month. Yeah, it's been a trial and a half, but we made it. Yes, we're finally here, and we can. In that time, Jumpooty decided to just say, "Screw it, just release everything, everything possible. Doesn't matter. Here you go, back to back limiteds. Who cares?" Yeah, just... and boy, has that really sucked. It has. It actually has. I actually think so. We may as well talk because the the units themselves, we're going to be skipping a lot of them just because there's literally too many to talk about since we've been gone. But the actual current rate of the game feels almost unsustainable to continue forward. <laughs> yeah, it, I'm assuming it's because it's anniversary time. So they're like, quick, make them spend things. I guess, yeah, yeah, um, because it's, we're, we're celebrating, what is it, the Taiwanese version of the game's anniversary? We're celebrating Shonen Jump's yes. first issue? We're like... <laughs> We're Is celebrating we're... fucking everything, basically. Just everything on the planet. Um, really irritating. <laughs> yeah, it's too much. It's too much at once. But also, it feels also strangely stretched thin at the same time. Yeah, it feels like it's a lot of banners, but not that much to, like, do, really. Yeah, no. Not very it's, much It's to really do. frustrating. Yeah. Not the best direction to kind of go in. Especially as we're going into some other stuff. I think pretty soon we're going to probably stabilize once the One Piece event starts. And I, they always seem to go all out whenever it's related to One Piece. So at least that seems to be the great equalizer. So I don't know if they're going to be planning to do a double banner. Which would be really sucky if they did two limiteds for One Piece. The only reason I say two is because they're still... Um, we have, so we ended up getting One Piece characters that were just released from the Taiwanese version of the game for this celebration, but we still don't have the old ones that they released a long time ago. The Which one, is really also annoying because some of them are really cool. Yes, the one I've been waiting for specifically. They fucking released Garp early, but they did not release my Long Carrot. Which is annoying. I want, there's some Taiwanese ones. It's because of JoJo, right? That's why Taiwan's different? Mm-hmm. That's why. Because jo Taiwan okay. can't get JoJo characters, so they get characters that are different from ours. So they get it from, I guess, series that they can do, which is why they got Hoshi the, um, Right. The fucking... They have... um, Fuck, what's it called? Uh, Kurama Mode Minato. And I want that dude so bad. That's right, they do have And it. it's just not happening, and it sucks. Yeah. It's a really weird choice on, on their behalf, too. Which ones get to come over to us at a certain point, and which ones don't seems to be random. <laughs> seems to be crazy random, and at the, their very whims, I guess, depending on whether or not they actually want to bring them over as a regular unit or a limited. Because if I remember right, um, I think Garp might be a limited in the Taiwanese version of the game. He is. Uh, same thing goes for Cake Island Sanji, I think, is the same way. But when they came over here, then they're not. Like, Garp is just a regular I think Kakashi band. also was. Um, the Kamui Kakashi. Mm -hmm. He was uh, limited in Taiwan, and he's just a normal gacha unit in uh, the English version. Yeah, so strange. Strange all around. But yeah, it's they, been a little bit of a... It, a, a weird time in Jampudi just because it's too many things and at least to be fair to me at least it's not a one it's not a hundred percent from series that I would have necessarily go hype crazy for I would have liked um Lemillion and Aerie but it's like there's too many dudes being released at the time so I need to kind of like well the problem is Jampudi does this also. It's just a thing they do, which irritates the shit out of me. Um, the guys are really good. <laughs> they're like <laughs> dumb good, and they're like, "Yeah, well, we're just gonna we're just gonna drop them and just let's just see what happens." <laughs> and so you have these 
these uh, characters dropping back to back to back to back that are just banger good. But you can't get any of them, or you can get like one unless you drop like a shitload of money. Yeah. And this one specifically, the freaking, I don't know what the hell they did for Nueno and, and Nura and Okawa, but they released the shittest banner in the history of the world. <laughs> Actually, the worst banner I've ever seen. <laughs> so terrible. So bad. And, and then they also put a, a, a character from a series I actually wanted as a side banner. The one time they don't fucking do the regular side banner thing is on this shit banner, and it actually features a Yuna character. I was so pissed when I saw that. <laughs> Uh, so it just doesn't make it. As it, it's also it's slightly infuriating because they're doing it to characters that they know are super niche and not a lot of people are going to be pulling for. So they can experiment with them, but that totally sucks for anyone that actually cares about the characters, especially since the <laughs> yeah. the, the last Dumble Banners, which were for characters that were actually liked, were super good deals actually. <laughs> You got tick the the ticket system, which I thought was much better. The 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 way they handled two uh, limiteds being released at the same time, where you pulled on them and you could use the tickets, and then you know exchange those tickets, and then you're good, basically done. The only th bummer was is that I don't think you could select a specific um, five care. Uh, you couldn't select a specific side banner character, which I think sucked. But at least. It was still cost. It still costs technically nine multis worth or something. This one costs so much, and then you basically had to pull twice. Was you get to do fifteen summons, I think, in total, to get potentially both limiteds at the same time. Not get both limiteds at the same time, but at least get the two limiteds, and you still would not be guaranteed all the side banner units. It's crazy. Just yeah, I I don't know what they like expect half the time. Because some of this shit is just insane. Yeah, yeah, it's it. There, I understand to a certain extent trying to experiment, but at a certain point, dude, just stop experimenting. Yeah, it's too much. You know, that's enough experimenting. Yeah, experiment time is over. Done. Stabilize. You need yeah. You need fifteen multis total. Four. So one less. I get no because nine plus nine. That's still a lot. That's still because once it hits the night multi, it doesn't re reset back to five hundred and seven fifty. It still goes one thousand, one thousand, one thousand, one thousand, one thousand, one thousand. So after the ninth one, where you get a guaranteed limited grade up, it's a random one. So if you only cared about one of these dudes, you're gonna get one randomly from the two. Oh, that's so bad. And then there's only it's, two. It's not good. Yeah, it's really bad. Only on the 5th and the 12th multi you get a guaranteed 5 hero grade pickup unit. And then the other ones you get five guaranteed 5 units on 3, 4, and 7th. But who gives a shit? <laughs> it's, there's the banner Yeah, why so would you big. care about that? Yeah, it's super fucking dumb. Yeah, it it's a bummer. Especially because I do like Jampudi. But occasionally, this happens with I think every single gacha in the world actually. Is that there comes a breaking point where even if you like it. Some t there's a specifically always a month where they'll just carry on all their annoyances and that's when the one month where they stack up where the annoying pile outweighs the good pile and I think this is basically what it's been like since we uh, did the last recording is that it's that's basically what Jampudi has felt like for me for the, for the time being is it feels like all the annoying things have been uh, overshadowing the parts that I actually like about the game which is a shame <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I would say that is true for me as well. It's yeah. like all the awful stuff that you're like, it can't possibly be this bad. Yeah. And then it is every time. It is. And I don't know. It's a bummer. It's a, definitely a bummer. It's probably the, the, the worst time that I've had playing the game, at least at this current moment. But hopefully they can pick it up and start to work on some of the shit that they need to fix because uh, it really needs to get going done. And they also need to slow the hell down or give way more rupees. Yes. Because even, even with uh, a guarantee... Either one would yeah. be fine, but holy shit, pick one. Yeah. 
Because even with, because they gave a guaranteed limited for the celebration, it's not enough. And the 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 limited banner um, selection, unless it's a specifically choose a limited, is always a crapshoot if you get something good. Yeah, no, those banners are like. It never worth it. I don't think I've ever looked at one of those banners and I'm like, oh yeah, awesome. Yeah, it, they're always bad. Even even the free ticket, it's such a when they give you a free ticket, it's like, oh man, you have to basically pray, which I have to do every single time because the last two gave me um, fucking big ass hair gone, <laughs> the worst, <laughs> like the worst limited, one of the worst limiteds out there, unless you care about just pure raw damage, I guess. Um. This one, thankfully, I was able to get at least uh, Pegasus Seiya, which was new and I think decent enough where it made me feel, okay, that's good. But yeah, yeah something something needs to improve. So just to get that out of the way, just to give a quick summary of what we've been feeling about the game, let's actually try and get through most of these units. I'm going to just in a whole swash ta- mention these units came out. So when we first started, the Vongola units came out, which is all the Reborn characters. Um, the Reborn Fest, that's how long ago we have not talked about it, <laughs> is that the Reborn <laughs> was just coming out and had been announced. I was actually able to get uh, Suna and Reborn, which I was very happy about, and I think their unit's pretty good. I was a little bit disappointed in the side uh, unit selections, because it ended up being units that I was like, uh, maybe not 100% the dudes I would have picked, like, um, they got, <laughs> they got Suna's dad, <laughs> he's in there, uh, the one, the, the Iwatatsa Sawada, the one who just looks like a man in, <laughs> in a, a very, a chibi man in a suit, that's his dad, they got Fran, which I, I, I honestly forgot who Fran was up until... I looked at him and I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? Because it's from the final arc. And I was like, okay, no, no. I remember now. Once I look, I had to look it up and go like, who are you? And I was like, okay, no, never mind. Another Makuro, which we already had, I think, two in the game. So there was another one. And speaking of, hey, we already had this guy in the game. They gave another Hibiri, <laughs> which would be the third one that they've added to the game. <laughs> And uh, Bermuda and Jaeger, which is the little baby uh, shadow one. Yeah, the, the, the little tiny boy. <laughs> yeah, the 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 dark uh, baby man <laughs> with his zombie partner <laughs> from the evil side of the baby rings, of course. From the shadow uh, government that takes care of the mafia in Reborn. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, I didn't, I wasn't super feeling the side bear uh, character selection. And of course you brought this up again, uh, cause I, the last time we talked about reborn, which is that they keep picking Suna as the limited <laughs> every time, every, every fucking time. time. And funny enough, the other two side banner dudes that they picked were dudes. I would have been like, they should probably get limited at some point. <laughs> and they chose them as the side units. <laughs> So, yeah. I liked Suna and Reborn, though. I like their unit. I like that Reborn shoots Suna and he turns into a man very briefly. I think I like that. Uh, but, yeah, that's basically it. I like their unit. I think they're a solid little unit. What do you feel about them? Because I know you don't actually... You've never yeah. read Reborn, so you don't have any specifics about the characters. So you can no, I don't have any, like, attachment to them as characters or anything. Uh, they're, they're cool. They're good. Um... They kind of came out, like, right at the time where everyone started getting really good. So they're definitely, like, up there on the, the list of value, as it were. Um, I think they're... <clears throat> I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure that in PvP, they're, like, very top tier. And in PvE, they're, like, getting there-ish top tier. Um, mm, yeah. I think they're, like, top four or something in PvE. And they're, like... The dude in PvP, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's um, pretty nice. Can't ask for more from that as a reborn fan. <laughs> At least for the limited six, <laughs> you you can't. Yeah, that is it's... one nice thing about um, Jumpudi is that it will make characters that aren't like 
Goku and Naruto, like it'll still make them really good, you know. We probably have more non-good Gokus than we have good Gokus at this point, right? I think we're probably about. Yeah, we're reaching. Uh, at least oh. limited wise, we're probably about even. I mean, I think most Dragon Ball characters are pretty good. Uh, I know that the the two old Gokus suck. The um, the original Super Saiyan three is terrible, mm-hmm. and I think the Namek one is really bad, which Namek sucks because he's really so cool. Good. Damn. Yeah, that's a shame. But I'm pretty sure he sucks really bad. Um, Kaioken is really good. The Spirit Bomb one is obviously really good. And Super I think, um, yeah, the duo is is pretty good too. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that's the Reborn side of the units. And then after Reborn, we have Prince of Tennis, um, which I thought that this guy was the same guy, but no, it isn't the same guy. The limited was, is it the closed eyes guy? The Shus- yeah, Shusuke? Yeah, uh, Shinsuke, I think his name is. Um, okay, Shinsuke. Hang on, uh, let me look at who, what his exact name is. Because uh, it's either Shinsuke or Shusuke. I might be confusing his name with the guy from Gintama. <laughs> Very likely. I'm it is Shusuke, yeah, Shusuke okay. Fuji. Yeah, they added Shusuke. He's the limited. Um, and then the new units, I have no idea. Because all these prince dudes, uh, all these tennis boys look very similar. <laughs> they do kind of all look the same, yeah. Yeah, not they in a mean... They have some same face going yeah, on. Not in a mean way, just kind of like, yeah, vaguely, you could have... I could point to any of the bottom here at OCHD of the bottom one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of these characters and said some of these were released for this uh, celebration and others were released beforehand. And I would not be able to tell you which were which. <laughs> I could not physically tell you but they added some what do you feel about this event since as um i've stated before i don't really know much about prince of tennis other than he's very good at tennis but you're you actually know prince of tennis so how do you feel about the the units that they picked uh it was cool so the closed eyes moment is one of the cooler moments in the probably the whole series um because shusuke has kind of always been like the the number two behind Tezuka, who was the previous limited. And uh, he never really, like... He was good, but he was never, like, crazy over the top in comparison to some of the other characters. And then he got that cool moment where he plays blind, and he closes his eyes, and he, like, masters his special move and stuff, which was pretty sick. Um, That sounds sick. All the other characters they picked were basically just the entire rest of the main cast. (laughs) (laughs) Fair enough. You have to finish off the cast. There was some strange drink. I remember that. Yes, that is a thing uh, that the they have like a player who's kind of a nerd. He's like the analyst. Mm-hmm. And uh, he makes all these horrible drinks and forces them to drink them. And it's actually his victory uh, animation <laughs> when he wins is he holds out the horrible, nasty drink. Nice. It's pretty good. Uh, there was also something related to bowling for some reason. Don't remember why. I assumed that that was a reference to the series at one point that there's a prince of bowling, but yeah. Uh, uh, there's a bowling episode of the anime. There you go. That's probably. I don't think it's actually in the. Oh, I know. I guess it is in the manga. I just don't remember it. But (laughs) there is. There are some chapters where they just go hang out and like bowl. Right. Fair enough. As one does. As you do, bowling around at the speed of sound. Next, moving on, because this also happened, because for some reason, uh, uh, Taiwan, for their celebration thing, they got a new Musoi, and it was from Hoshienji. No longer can I say that the first Hokage is the weirdest Musoi that we have. Yes, holy shit. Because now we Uh, have Guy from Hoshienji. This fucking Guy. Not to make fun of Hoshi Enji, just because literally neither the one of us have no shit about Hoshi Enji. It's just that it's really funny that 
all the other not knowing anything about the characters and just knowing that this is a character from Hoshigenji, he's super out of place with everyone. <laughs> yes, I, I don't know anything about him. Maybe he's like the dude. I don't know. He could be the dude. For all we know, he could. Fuck. I mean, he, there's no other versions of him in the game, so it's fully possible that he's the dude. Um, one hundred percent. But he doesn't really feel like the dude. He doesn't feel like the dude. I'm gonna be real with you. Uh, I, I thought he was being the dude. He kind of looks like a slight um, OC version of the main character. Yeah, that's. I thought that he was like a super mode of the main character. It turns out he's not. No different character completely. One hundred percent, completely different. Not not related to each other at all, as far as we know. Um, as far as I'm aware, yeah. I know yeah. they have different names, so I won't say not related at all. I don't know that, but I know they have different names. Um, funny. So, yeah, really... So, I'm okay with the idea of them bringing in um, Musoys for series that are probably a little bit less... I really wonder how Hoshienji is related to in J Japan. Uh, I know they have a new anime most recently, so maybe they are fairly popular. But as far as we, us two know, not super popular. It, it, yeah, if it is, it's outside of my wheelhouse, I'll say yeah. that. I'll, we'll say that. Fair, to give fairness to Hoshienji, it is out of our comfort zone. It is even outside of all the weird shit I read. It has not permeated that view. <laughs> There's no yeah, dudes. No, not at all. There, there are no dudes crying seeing the new anime going. I can't believe it. Hoshi Enji returning. The, <laughs> God bless. God bless. Hashtag Hoshi Enji is back. Yeah, I haven't seen anyone say that. No, it hasn't really gone in as far as the English side of it. So, it's probably a very well liked series. Just probably not to the crazy degree of everything else. But either way, the, the, what I was trying to say is that the idea of them bringing in Musois from series that you just have. N would never have guessed them to bring over. <laughs> Even for Taiwan, for this guy being a uh, Musoi for Taiwan, for them to be doing a Musoi from any series that did not feel like the one of the bigger ones that would kind of get a Musoi feels kind of nice. And to be fair, Reborn was also kind of like that. But at least Reborn sold well and is well-liked. Uh, we have absolutely no idea about Hoshi Genji, so... Uh, I would like them to kind of continue to kind of do some stuff like that. Even though this guy specifically, I don't really care that much about. <laughs> yeah, have... I, I have nothing on this guy, really. But yeah. for the three people that are, like, super hype right now, I'm happy for you. Yeah. It would be kind of like if they had done a Musoi from Mr. Full Swing. And we would just have to kind of live with the fact that it's like, okay, I guess, <laughs> I guess Mr. Full Swing has a Musoi now. It's kind of want to. I, I kind of like that in idea, but am I actually going to summon for them? No, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to spend the thirty three multis <laughs> of, of, of rupees trying to get them. It's just not in my wheel bag, unfortunately. There's also some kind of weird alien chick, which really makes me wonder what the hell happens in Hoshienji if she's a part of this character list. She was also added here, who was I think a Taiwanese character. Jiyako, do you see her? She's right next to Fuki. Yes, jo Joka, this creepy-looking alien woman. I I'm guessing yes. she's like an alien. She either is an alien or a zombie. But she looks completely different from every other character in this series, <laughs> just looking at her. Uh, so there we go. Now, we are finally on uh, more modern times. May as well keep talking about um, Taiwan, because Taiwan has also given us some... Maybe the weirdest celebration I've ever seen, which is two One Piece characters and two My Hero characters, but two of the yeah, most... this sure is Shimfuchi, all right. But two of the most random characters from each. Uh, we'll start with My Hero because you actually know uh, My Hero, uh, Sir Night Eye, and Lemillion and Airy. So, um, Night Eye. I like Night Eye from what I remember of Night Eye. I, <laughs> I got find Night Eye so funny because spoilers, he's the only character that's allowed to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, spoilers for my hero. That's why I was about to say, from what I remember of Sir Night Eye, uh, he is the first character to eat it and then uh, 
he's this, he starts the arc of people saying, "Man, Deku's fucked up because he stole his super rare poster." <laughs> yeah. Also, he's the only one that didn't get to go to this like the same hospital that every other character goes to. Yeah. So it's a running <laughs> joke that uh, they intentionally took him to the shitty hospital, or Deku did, <laughs> so that he wouldn't live, so he could get the poster. Super rare all my poster. Start scumbag <laughs> Deku. <laughs> So that's really all I really got for Sir Night Eyes, because it's been so long since I actually remember seeing him. I do remember liking him when he was uh, around, but um, so nice to see him in the game, at least. Free character, so you can't argue with free, <laughs> I guess. And then, of course, Lemillion and Airy, which unfortunately is basically kind of just a repeat of the other Airy card, because <laughs> it's really just Airy watching Lemillion <laughs> It's so funny to me that she's now on two limiteds, and on both of them, she just, like, sits there. It is really funny, though. I really do like that, because you just got, there's nothing she can do. What's she going to do? Fucking throw hands? Yeah, I mean, what? but it's like, why is she even there? At least with Deku, it made sense, because she's technically contributing to what he's doing. Because mm -hmm. if you remember that fight, she's, like, rewinding the damage yes. that he takes while he's fighting. In this one... He literally sets her on the ground and then goes and <laughs> fights. It's really more of like, uh, yeah, I do, I do remember liking him in that moment, and he is very much tied to Eri. But also, it's not really for... Eri did not help in that fight. She just kind of... It'd be kind of like making a, a Goku and Krillin, but it's Namek Goku and Krillin. <laughs> at, the, at the start it's, of all uh, It's like uh, Goku... <laughs> And fucking wait, wait, Goku and Tien against Evil King Piccolo, because Goku <laughs> shows up and Tien's just down on the ground. <laughs> oh, but I would summon for that character in a fucking heartbeat. Are you kidding me? If the, it's if the... just Goku and then Tien's sprite is on its back. <laughs> yeah, that the, when you win, it's Goku falling perpetually. That and then on the floor is Tien laid out. <laughs> I would fuck. Are you kidding me? In a heartbeat, I take pretty good. <laughs> I take back everything I said. I would summon for that dude <laughs> so easily. Uh, but yeah, it, it is kind of like that situation <laughs> where it's like I guess they were technically involved. It'd be like making a unit off of um. No, this is just actually another unit I would summon on of one arm Naruto and Sasuke right after they're done fighting each other. <laughs> <laughs> I assume it's just because they want you to know what moment it's supposed to be from. Yeah. And since he doesn't really do anything different there other than just protect the girl, they have yeah. to like have her there so you know. Yeah. But so it's just, so funny. It is pretty funny. I also do the, the put down and then it, she just kind of watches and she always has that same look of amazement of, oh my god, <laughs> he's fucking them up. Um... I also really like, I think this is actually the funniest thing about Aerie, which is always what I thought was funny whenever I fought her in PvP, is that she gets smoked along with Deku when you knock him out. Really? Yeah, so when you take out Deku and Aerie, it doesn't just, it's not like Aerie gets off his back, she gets flying. Oh yeah, she flies into the fucking wall, just like yeah. he does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so when you beat him, Aerie gets taken down with a million as well. Which I think is pretty funny. I, I have not run into any Lemillion and Airy in uh, PvP yet. I assume they would work the exact same. <laughs> which is funny. And I feel fair. There's yeah, another... I haven't lost with them yet. I, I did end up getting him. Because oh, um, nice. he's super busted. <laughs> have not lost with them in PvP yet, so I can't tell you. Um, <laughs> if it ever but... happens. <laughs> now I'm gonna play PvP and just see if I can get them to die. <laughs> get them to die on that turn. Set them up for yeah. failure on purpose. <laughs> turn four, fight against Killua and uh, Hie, and get them completely blasted out of the sky. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I would definitely have liked them, but I didn't end up pulling for them because I know uh, there's bigger stuff coming. Especially if that copium of it there being potentially Jujutsu Kaisen, I want to at least have something for if that happens. And if that's not happening, I at least have something saved up for One Piece as well. So I unfortunately have to skip them for now. If there was more uh, stuff to summon with, I would definitely have gone more for them, but nothing I can do on that one. <sighs> 
Now, the other characters that were brought along with them, because they were not the only ones, the most two random-ass characters to add, uh, Monkey D. Garp and Sengoku, um, who are marine guys from One Piece, old marine dudes. Uh, Garp, do you want to take a guess uh, as to who Garp is related to? Uh, Luffy? (laughs) Yeah, it's Luffy's grandpa. Well, I mean, they didn't have the name. Yeah. I also did say it at the beginning, just to let you know, but Garp, which is pretty good. Um, And Sengoku, who is the Marine guy, who is the main, he's the big dude at Marine Ford. I don't know if you've seen what he does in here, but basically his special power is that he, I forget the name of his fruit, so I'm just going to call it the Buddha Buddha fruit, where he turns into a (laughs) giant Buddha. (laughs) (laughs) That kind of slams. Yeah, and he turns into a giant golden uh, fucking Buddha, and he, he, he's he's supposed to be one of the strongest characters, at least at that time, and I guess and probably nowadays he wouldn't be, because he's retired from being a Marine since then. Uh, Garp, I don't really think he has any powers, he's just really fucking good. <laughs> I think that's basically his backstory, is I'm really fucking good, and I'm really strong, and I punch big, and it's pretty good. Um... But still, very weird characters to put with Lemillion and Sir Nighteye. <laughs> well, you know, it's not uh, it's not Jumpfuti if they don't have a little bit of One Piece or Demon Slayer. It's true, but I feel like they that with one a One Piece theme celebration coming up, they probably could have slotted in one of the other mainstays. You know, not to be oh, that they could have, but it's not <laughs> Jumpfuti if they do that. Fair enough. They could have at least like put in a, a demon slayer guy. Where's the Where's the guy who makes the sword? Uh, what's his name? I don't oh, remember the, his name. The dude, the the sword. Yeah, the, I know you're talking about the swordsmith yeah, the bla- guy. Yeah, the the blacksmith guy. Add him in there. <laughs> and what other character would be related to him that they have not added from Demon Slayer? <laughs> yeah, what Demon Slayer characters even aren't you? Oh, uh, you, you could just make all of the characters again, but this time with their Slayer marks. Oh, you're right, you're right. They could totally do that. Um, They could have put them in. They could have put in some two random-ass Dragon Ball characters because, you know, Dragon Ball Superhero uh, currently smashing up, getting them more bucks out in the box office of Japan. Not over here because they don't care of a shit about us. And They they didn't until we started pirating it. And then they were like, you can't do that. You can't. And we were like, yeah, we can. Yeah, you totally can, can. Uh, I'm on with you. I'm with the pirates on this one. Y'all fucking fucked up on this. <laughs> if you didn't want this to happen, yeah, you it's 2022, dude. What did you think was gonna happen? Yeah, they got some. They're the most backward, and you know what? We're not here to argue about Dragon Ball Super. We'll save that for Shonen Archive when we eventually get to watching <laughs> Dragon Ball Superhero. <laughs> <laughs> Do our due diligence and uh, talk about it there. But they, I don't know. As much as I like Garp and some of the things he does, it's not immediately for me to go like, oh, yeah, Garp, he's in here. Hell <laughs> yeah, go. Garp. His name is Garp. It's hard to get hype for that. It is very hard to get hype for Garp. No one's out there. <laughs> that, that's the, the the reason he had to retire from the Marines is that every time he asked who hype for Garp, no one would ever respond back to him. <laughs> The Lord. They would have parties for him, and they'd be like, <laughs> All right, Garp, come on down. And they'd be like, mm. Mm. And it would hurt his feelings a lot, so he had to, <laughs> he had to leave. It'd be, it's like the Squidward gag, whenever they show, Oh, I said Goku, <laughs> oh yeah, woo! And then they add Garp. <laughs> Fuck y'all. <laughs> After everything I've done for you, <laughs> this is how you repay me? So yeah, free characters at least, but very random ones. And speaking of random, here's the celebration that we have currently. It is a spooky time in summer uh, fest- uh, festival thing. I think, what what did they officially call it? The the Festival of Spooky Times? Something like that? The <laughs> Scary, scary days. <laughs> spooky, scary skeleton days? Something like that? <laughs> Spoopy days, the festival. <laughs> Spoopy time. I would, if only it was called that. I think it's called the Festival of Fears, which is maybe a too uh, aggro a title for the characters we got from it. I'll say that much. 
Uh, so yeah, in the Festival of Fear, we'll break them down into this way. We got two new limiteds from two of the more horror-themed um, manga series, as well as two characters from Yuna, who are not, which I will uh, emphasize this again, Yuna is not a horror-themed manga, unless you are extremely afraid of boobs of some kind, in which case yeah, it is the most like a, terrifying. it's like a ghost she's uh, that's that's the, the thing right she's yeah. a ghost she's a ghost yeah. it, there, there there are definitely monsters you know like spooky ghost women and ogres and stuff like that so it does fit thematically in in essence like cat gods like one of them's in here has a cat god with them ninja chicks but maybe not on the same tier as like i have a demon hand <laughs> maybe not that far gone <laughs> at least the characters they picked aren't like that level of like sp- spooky they didn't even pick one of the ghost characters. They picked a, a character who has a cat god with her and a ninja girl. Those are the two that they picked, Bari and uh, Yaya. But anyway, <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, they ended up picking from what is the name of the other series? And I can't ever remember the name of it. Uh, Hell Teacher Nube, which feels like a manga I would have already read, but I have not read it. And Nura Yahian No Mago. Which I've also never heard. Which also feels like a manga that I would have read, but I have not read it actually. Yeah, these are all the ones you're supposed to be up on. Yeah. Oh, actually, and then this guy, which I actually have read. Muhoi and Roji's Bureau of Supernatural Investigations. (laughs) The Yochi from there. I have actually read this series to completion. It's fantastic. I love it. Um, It randomly ends because I'm going to assume that they lost popularity at some point. But I really like that series. All right, I can get behind that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's go over these characters. I may as well start with the one from Yuho and Ryuji, which is Yochi. Um, yeah, not necessarily the character I would have picked from this series, even if it is just, I think, a free-to-play character version of it, which is a shame. If, if you don't know what uh, Muho and Ryuji's Bureau of Supernatural Investigation is about, basically there's these dudes that can summon... Um, spirits if they have like contracts with them and Muhe and Ryoji have a detective agency where they kind of investigate spooky shit that happens and then they can kind of take care of the spooky shit for it and there's an entire system built around like there's the main um uh uh, like a kind of a system of like there's the the main guy who is the little boy which I believe is called Mu- Muhoi and he's the one who can actually like summon forth like demons from hell and all that other stuff and the other character kind of just like assists him until he can get his wizarding license for lack of a better term for it I guess um and I guess that with this character is one of the characters that are just like a side one so I would have actually preferred a little bit more characters on this side if anything it probably would have if I would have taken it I would have either had one other Yuna character or had the two Yuna characters be replaced from uh, it'd be from Muhoi and Roji, if that's the way I was going to do it. Because both of these series I actually like, but I feel like doing it like this doesn't really do enough for the series. Especially because Muhoi and Ryoji only have like four characters, I think, in the game right now. I think they only, th- and this is their fourth. I can't they believe the, they even have that many. Yeah, they have the two main characters, which they are not uh, together as like... Uh, as a dual unit, they have yeah, they have the bat. They have Muihoi, they have Roji, they have Inshu, and then they have this guy, which is the new character that they just added. So they have the villain, the two main characters, and a side character. So probably would have could have used that to maybe add a little bit more characters from there. Um, but yeah, this character I don't think really isn't one of the cool ones. There's like one specific character that can summon a Kappa that is really cool. I would have probably preferred that one, but. Nice of them to at least acknowledge that the series exists, though. It's kind of nice. Uh, and then the two unit characters, as I said before, Yaya is the one who has the Totoro uh, cat bus kind of character. She has a cat god, which is why she has cat-like features to her, because she summons a giant cat god. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, she's pretty cool. She's very cat-like. There's not much else to say about her other than... She's a cat girl, but probably like a feral cat girl, so she's more cat than she is girl. <laughs> so, at least from what I remember of her, 
That's the most thing I remember. And then Hibari, who is the other ninja, the one that is not with the big boobs. It is, I believe they are either sisters or cousins from what I can remember. Um, she's the one who, she's actually one of the very few characters where I actually thought like this kind of sucked because you hate to see it because it very rarely ever happens. But she's actually one of the few characters in a horror manga who confesses to the main character and there's no like, uh, oh, I didn't hear that. I think he tries to do that. And then she says, listen, I love you. And he goes, oh, thanks. And then he gets, he, he basically rejects her and says, I'm not really looking for a relationship right now, or I don't see you in that fashion. And she goes, I understand. And then her character becomes, oh, fuck, what have I done? <laughs> From that point on, where she goes like, I'm literally, I have no chance. I literally already got rejected. What do I do now? So I always like that kind of uh, side to her. I actually like her much better after she gets rejected and her trying to deal with the ramifications of that. But I think this is before that. She also gets really cool ninja armor because that's how ninja armor works in, uh, in Yuna, <laughs> where <laughs> I guess after a specific heartbreak or something, you get a power up from it. I don't think she has that super cool armor in this one though, but... Still nice to kind of see her in the game. The other ninja girl is also already in here. Um, Unix seems to get stuff, like, decently frequently. Yeah, I, which I'm a fan of. I actually finally have all the Unix characters because they updated the um, the five-star ticket selection. So I was finally able to get uh, Sagiri, who is the other ninja girl, which was the only Unix character I was missing. So now I have all of them, <laughs> which is nice. Um, yeah, I like having the full collection of the characters that I like. Yeah, yeah, it's very nice. But yeah, they should definitely keep releasing unit characters because there's definitely a lot of late game... Uh, I'm still waiting for them to release the MC at the, like in the final level because I think I've mentioned this before to you. Um, the main character at the end, by the end of it, he's shooting like a giant fist into like space. That's how crazy the, the power leveling has gone by the end of Yuna is that the main character's main ability is I hit real hard, and he hits so hard a giant fist comes forth and basically shakes the earth and the core of it of itself. He has, like, a godlike punch, which is pretty funny because the running joke is that that's all he does throughout the series is that he punched <laughs> real good. And so he never, he never gets, like, super special aura attacks. He just punches better. <laughs> that's all he gets. It's almost Torical like, but it's not as raw as Torical. I'll say that much. It it almost reaches Torical levels though. Almost. Um, yeah. And now we have the other characters, which is uh, did you pull on any of these limiteds, by the way? Just uh, I got the Prince of Tennis guy, and I got the Million. Okay. So. <clears throat> The, since we don't know anything about the Neuro character and we don't know much about Hell Teacher, we should actually probably talk about the unit itself. So for Hell Teacher Nube, uh, the Emissary of Justice from Hell, which is his title, which sounds really cool, actually. <laughs> sounds like a great name. Um, this is what he does at level 12. His ultimate attack, it inflicts 505, uh, 515% damage to one enemy. And if the enemy has counterattack up, remove it and inflict an additional 20% damage. Remove the strongest attack up buff from all enemies. Remove the strongest ultimate attack damage up buff from all enemies. For two turns, boost this unit's ultimate attack by 10%. Um, his friend, his buddy skill at level 12 is convert one random bubble into a skill bubble. Convert r nine random bubbles into yellow bubbles. Is this guy a yellow unit? He is a yellow unit. <clears throat> For three turns, boost the attack of yellow team members by 15%, 20% in the tower. For two turns, boost the appearance rate of yellow bubbles by a large amount. And uh, his passive skill at level 12 is reduce the number of weakening for this unit by two. Boost this unit's attack by 16%. During turn one through three of the adventure, reduce the number of bubbles required to create a skill bubble for this unit by three. At the start of the turn, if the enemy is of the special class, guard 12% of all damage received for this unit. So how do you actually think he is as a unit itself, uh, Zen? Uh, I think he's really good. 
I think he's super good. I think he's obnoxiously good. Um, yeah, <laughs> actually. I think that basically everyone who has come out lately, from the Muso up to now, mm-hmm. with the exclusion of the Prince of Tennis characters, because this game fucking hates me, um, <laughs> have been extremely busted. And this guy is no exception. Yeah, that buddy skill. I had to actually check to see if it was yellow. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And I think that buddy skill is more or less uh, the same one that the million has, but for yellow. Uh, yeah, basically. Let me see. Lemillion, we may as well. Actually, no. Lemillion's is different. Lemillion's is more of a bubble changer. He doesn't get a skill bubble. So this guy's even better than I thought he was because he gets a skill bubble too, which is just what the fuck, man. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, good for car- good for the people who really like Hell Teacher uh, Nube over here. <laughs> this is your time to to eat because he sounds really good. He looks cool. Fantastic side name. Just a real shame that they have they ever added. So actually, to say how crazy it's been since the last time we recorded, since that recording, Saint Seiya has finally entered the Shonen Jump app. Something I thought they would yes, never do. Yes, I saw that. I need to read that. I need to read that too. I was like, oh shit, I can't believe it. Because that's actually one of the car- the series that has been released. And I've been trying to track down a version of it with not crispy um, scans. Impossible. Literally impossible. Yeah, that's why I don't really read iShield 21 anymore. Because the scans are fucking shit show. Yeah, which is the, that's actually a real shame about iShield 21. Especially because that's the artist from the same... Um, artist who does One Punch Man, so there's some mm-hmm. fan fucking tastic art in it, but it's all ruined yeah, it's by Maratha. Shit, fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and also the other annoying thing is that I, actually I should check the Shonen Jump app because I'm actually wondering if they translate it as Knights of the Zodiac, or did they do the full thing and actually say change it to Saint Seiya? Because if you don't know uh, this, um, I think it does have Saint Seiya in the title on the app hang on let me find it i'm in here already no it's under knights of the knights zodiac, of the zodiac parentheses. parentheses saint Seiya. interesting and but then it also has the logo and the logo says saint Seiya knights of the zodiac mm. so for some reason it says knights of the zodiac but then it has saint Seiya afterward instead yeah. of in front of it that is weird now the, if you ever wonder why it's called knights of the zodiac because this was released over here during a time where they thought Saint Seiya sounded too um what's a nice way of saying foreign sounded too <laughs> foreign for <laughs> English speakers <laughs> so they changed uh Saint Seiya into Knights of the Zodiac um and that's kind of what I've always known it as which has always been the the thing that's made it hard to find is I've actually always tried to find someone who who did a fan translation of it because i wasn't sure how censored knights of the zodiac was compared to everything else um and i've never actually known that but now i now that it's actually on the shonen jump app i might actually start reading it and going through it um because i've always been interested in it but i would like it if they started doing it for other series like that like if they had add if they would add hell teacher nube to the app i would gladly start reading it just because the main problem is that it always is is that I don't like finding um, the the it's not that I don't like finding it is that usually with um, a lot of manga that is not popular it's a crapshoot if it ever even got finished like I don't want to start Hell Teacher um, New Bay if it turns out it did like only ten it volumes of two canceled yeah like yeah. Yeah, because the fan translator was like, ah, shit, I got college, so I couldn't do it anymore, and my main translator went to jail, so I couldn't really continue doing it, and it's all bad. And so um, I appreciate all the fan efforts, but when it's fan efforts, it's very easy to kind of go sideways unless you're crazy dedicated. Like I've said before, I've been waiting years for the dedicated people who continue to translate Raku Denenshi Blues to finish it, because... They're not even like one third of the way done with Raku Denenshi Blues when the fan translator stopped it, and then finally someone else has picked it up. And it's like I am no one's talking about Raku Denenshi Blues but me. I'm the only person. <laughs> only me. 
only me. I'm the only one who goes like this manga has the sickest fucking uh uh, body breakers, <laughs> body drops in manga history, dedicating four um, manga pages to a pile driver. That's that kind of manga for me, but it never gets, <laughs> it never gets a uh, chance. That's never being added to the app. Time to learn Japanese and take matters into your own hands. I'm at that point where I'm kind of like that because I have all of Raku Denenshi Blues untranslated. <laughs> I have all the volumes. I just can't read any of it because I don't know Japanese. <sighs> but I digress. <clears throat> good to see that this guy's good. I'm kind of still interested in this series as the more I look at this guy. Because it really does feel like a manga that I should have already read by this point. And then also some kind of bull or cat. Zeki also joined him with his giant demon hand. <laughs> Which looks like... But I'm going to assume it's the bad guy version of uh, our teacher over here. And then finally we have Rikua Nura and Surara Oikawa. I probably f completely fucked that up, but it's okay. Because this is from a series not a lot of people know. Their ultimate attack is inflict 500% damage to one enemy. And if the enemy is afflicted by freeze, inflict an additional 30% damage. Until the end of the next turn, freeze all enemies. The freeze starts at 5,000%. 5, 5, not 500, 5,000%. 5,000 damage in every turn add an additional uh, 60,000? Yes. Damage for one turn at the end of each turn. Recover 500 HP. Uh, 22,000 in the tower. Yeah, 22,000. Um, <clears> their buddy skill is convert 5 heart bubbles to blue. Convert 5 red bubbles to yellow. Recover 3,000 HP. 70,000 in the tower. Remove the strongest attack up buff from all enemies for two turns. Freeze one enemy. The freeze starts at 40,000. Uh, 40, is it? Yes, 40,000. In every turn after, add an additional 40,000. Cool down nine turns. Their passive skill is reduce the number of turns of curse for this unit by three. Boost this unit's attack by 13%. If you connect eight or more bubbles with this unit at the end of the turn, recover 500 HP, 50,000 HP in the tower. At the start of the turn, if the enemy is a tank class, guard 26% damage received of this on this unit. <clears throat> on turns 3 and 6 of the adventure before the unit turn, convert 6 yellow and heart bubbles to blue and convert 8 green bubbles to red. Okay. Very strange. But yeah. That's this unit. And it's another uh, double unit as well. So how'd you feel about them, Zen? Uh... They're so fun fact. I've tried to read this manga like twelve times. And I've never been able to get through it all the way. <laughs> Not because it like sucks, but I just lose interest really quick in it. Fair enough. Um, I don't find them like bonkers. Mm -hmm. I guess. I don't know. Units with status ailments these days are like. I can't tell if what they're supposed to be doing. Um, I'm just kind of like okay. okay. I think they're good. Um, I think they're more on the tier of the Prince of Tennis guy than they are like Lemillion or uh, Noeno or whatever the fuck that guy's name is. Yeah. Um, I think they're the best. Actually, I don't know. Are they the best freezing unit? Because uh, Adult Toshiro is really fucking good. Well, Shiro Hoshi is only as a buddy. Okay, never mind that. In my heart. Um, it's it's either them or Adult Toshiro, because Adult Toshiro is really fucking good. Um, I would probably say Adult Toshiro. My, my non-jokey answer. I think they have a really good buddy skill. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, that's a really strong freeze for a buddy skill, and they have a 70k heal on it. Um, I don't know. I think you could do some cool stuff. Again, I don't really play PvE that much, so I don't really know. But in PvP, I think you could do some cool gimmicky stuff with them. Where like you run them as and then they're their like main alt does a freeze and then you also run um Crollo on them so that they do the second freeze, so they do like another freeze on them so, like from their buddy skills too. Big freeze. Shit, if you did you could put like them and then put Crollo on them and then put Shirahoshi as another buddy on them and just do like a shit zillion freezes. <laughs> and then have Kenshin on your last guy and just, like, do a million freezes. Uh, that would be pretty funny, I feel like. Um, yeah. But I don't think they're, like, crazy. I think they're more just, like, uniquely cool, but not, like, overwhelming or crazy. 
Yeah, that's kind of where I'm, I'm going with that as well. Still kind of cool. I, I do think like it would be pretty fun to do that, though. To, like, now that you do a freeze this. with their ultimate, and then use Krollo so you get the freeze from their buddy skill, and then do Shirahoshi freeze from her buddy skill. Non-stop freeze. Stay cool. Yeah, that sounds pretty alright to me. And uh, the other character is also from there, I think it's called... Oh, no. Yeah, no, it is from there. Ryuji, okay. He's also from there. Anyway, <clears throat> those are all the new units that um, came to Jumpudi, and we're all caught up. Sorry if we weren't able to talk about all of them or give specifics to them, but we really have to do a catch-up, and we really can't. We already have a very dedicated people um, that watch Jumpudi Jams, and I, we thank you very much for doing it. There's not enough dedicated people who are willing to spend two hours of us talking <laughs> about... Yeah. <laughs> just not not in there we would probably we would gladly do it if we thought there was probably people who would be down for it but otherwise hey we'll try and be a little bit more upkeeping with the crazy schedule of it <laughs> so it doesn't happen but you know it is what it is but thank you very much for joining us we will hopefully be back for whenever they release new units so another week or two and we won't ever try and we will do our damnedest to not ever have a situation where um, we have to talk about like 27 units in one go. <laughs> yeah, I, ideally that will not happen again because yeah. we it, it felt pretty uh, like fate that we couldn't get anything going. But yeah, it was it, yeah it was pretty it was it was like literally a thing of like. Uh, Zen wasn't in the country. This is Zen was wasn't feeling. Zen was sick. Then I was sick, and then finally we could get together and record only after so many instances, and of it trying to get together. And man, it's just a lot. I don't know what's up with Wednesdays. I don't know what the fuck Wednesday did to the people. Wednesday is uh. Odin's day, right? Maybe we fucked with Odin in some way. Is it Odin's day? Yeah, isn't it? That's why. I don't um. Know. Okay, let me. Now I'm just gonna be sure. Odin's day. Woden's day. Yeah. When? Yeah. There you go. I Woden you or the, Odin, the ruler you, of the Norse god realm. Why do you think we call it Thursday? It's Thor's day. Oh yeah. Okay. Why do we do that? Wasn't it Romans who or who, who made these days up? <laughs> who made this calendar? I don't. I, I don't a hundred percent know for that. But now I'm kind of curious to see who the other did. Tyre, the god of war, is for Tuesday. So, uh, now I'm kind of actually curious to see Norse days, days of the week origin. Because now I actually don't. I only knew. The Odin is Wednesday because of a spoiler for American Gods. The character Mr. <laughs> Wednesday is actually Odin. And that's the reveal is that's why his name is called Mr. Wednesday <laughs> because he's Odin. Thor is Thursday, which is pretty simple. Uh, let me see now. Let me see. Tyre is uh, except all cookies, of course. Monday, the moon. Manin Day. Mung Mandagard, Managar Menadarg, Tysdarg, Odin's Darg, Porsdarg, Thor, Frigadar, Lagadar, and Sunadarg. <laughs> I guess named after Saturn, the Sun, Frigg, Thor, Odin, Tyre, and the Moon. Alright. <laughs> Why not? I I don't know 100%. This is beyond my... Unfortunately, Fate Grand Order has not really taught me as to why the Norse days are named after the the, the Norse gods. If they did, I would 100% be able to tell you. But until the day happens where they start talking about Norse mythology and telling me why the days are named after the specific gods, I won't actually be able to tell you. Which is how I learn all my history is actually is from Fate Grand Order telling me <laughs> the backstory of characters. Yeah. <clears throat> but that's enough of that. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. We'll see you guys next time. <sighs> Hopefully not too long of a break. But you guys enjoy yourselves. Good luck in all your summons if you are summoning on any of these uh, terrible banners. <laughs> or good luck saving for the next one. Fucking units, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I wish you the best of luck, and we'll see you guys in the next one. We don't have an ending thing for uh, for this series. We sure don't. No, we never do. Unfortunately, shown in archive, <laughs> we actually worked on an ending. So if you want to see a good ending to a hour long thing, go check out shown in archive. <laughs> I they will stay loosey goosey as far as I'm concerned on your booty jams, but that's how we jam it out, man. It's 100 percent straight from the dome, from the heart. No, <laughs> no right out of the soul. Exactly, Soul's Day. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Say goodbye, Zim. Goodbye, everybody. There. <laughs>